Hi everyone, and welcome to the start of our virtual event for Katana 5. Thank you everyone so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're all as excited to learn about these new features as I am to be demonstrating them for you this week. This release of Katana brings some really exciting and game-changing new features, which are gonna enhance artists' experiences when working in Katana. To introduce myself, I'm Ruth. I've been at Foundry for over two years now. At first, creating learning content for Foundry products before moving over to be a creative specialist for Katana. And we're also going to be joined by Gary Jones, the product manager for lighting, and Ariel Martin, the associate product manager for Katana. And we will all be available after this session to answer any questions that you might have. So to kick off the week, we're going to start in this session by having a look at the highly anticipated Nuke Bridge. So first of all, what is this Nuke Bridge? Well, Nuke Bridge allows you as artists to stream renders from Katana to a Nuke composite and then back to be viewed inside Katana. It's the first step in bringing interoperability between Katana and Nuke to artists, with the overall aim being to allow for more communication and easier collaboration between the lighting and compositing departments. This bridge helps to round trip these stages of the pipeline, so there can be a flow between the two tools and subsequently between artists. So how can implementing the Nuke bridge in your workflow be beneficial? Well, first of all, it means that you don't have to wait for renders to complete to then be passed on to Nuke to see what a comp is gonna look like. You can stream your renders through the Nuke comp without ever needing to leave Katana or launching Nuke if you don't want to. This allows you to be working in the context of that Nuke composite, and you can continue to make lighting or material adjustments inside Katana. The Nuke Bridge is beneficial to artists in any CGI industry, including animation and VFX, both feature and episodic, product and architectural visualization, and so on. In this session, we're gonna explore the benefit of the Katana Nuke Introp, and I'm gonna take you through a few different examples of how this bridge can be utilized for different artists in these various industries, as well as how each comp mode can be used effectively, depending on your task. So let's start off by having a quick look at the Nuke Bridge tab. The Nuke Sessions section is populated once comps are set off to show you the state of these comps. Multiple comps can be run at the same time by using the new button at the top so that you can preview multiple different comp variations with the same render, or multiple scene variations through the same comp. And we then have an input for the Nuke script path to be loaded. Once the script is loaded, you'll have Nuke input points and output nodes, which you can use to control which renders and which output you want to view. Then we have a drop down for where we want to send these comps and then the buttons to start each comp. So we have the preview, the live and the interactive comps. I'm going to be going through these modes in much more detail and give examples for why each might be used later on in this session. But just to give a quick overview, a preview comp allows a completed render to be passed through a headless nuke so you can see the result in Katana. Live comps allow a live render to be passed through headless nuke so the resulting comp image will update with any lighting or material changes that you may want to make inside Katana. So with preview and live comps, Nuke won't be launched. You'll be able to focus on your work in Katana. Interactive comps, on the other hand, will launch Nuke so that you can make edits to the comp and see the updates inside Katana. You can also pass live renders through an interactive comp to work side by side and see changes made from either side reflected in the comp. So as I said, I'll be going through more in-depth examples of each of these modes, but I just wanted to give you an overview before we jump in. The first thing I'm going to show you, and probably the first step when wanting to use the uh, Nuke bridge, is to show you how to set up a Nuke script so that it's compatible to stream your renders from Katana. So to support the Nuke bridge, these new nodes have been added to Nuke, the Katana Reader and Katana Writer nodes. And now these work in the same way as Read and Write nodes in terms of setup. So comp artist, you'll just need to use a Katana reader node in place of a read node when you want that image to be streamed from Katana and Katana writer node instead of a write node where you want the output to be visible back in Katana. 
So instead of having a file browser appear when the nodes are created, um, these nodes will stand in for any image that you want to be streamed from Katana. So now we'll jump into Nuke and I'll show you how to um, set up a script for use with the Nuke bridge. So the nodes can be created in the usual way from the tab menu or from this new Katana section in the node creation sidebar. I'm just going to set up a really simple script that will perform a grade and add a glow to the image. So I'll connect my Katana reader node to a grade and then the glow and then I'll add a Katana writer node. And I'm just going to rename these nodes. I'll name the input render because it will be taking a, a render from Katana. And the output will be uh, grade. And now I'm just going to save this script. Um, and then I'll bring up Katana, open them both side by side, just to show you how these nodes are respected in the Nuke Bridge tab. So I'll load in this script that I've just saved out. And you'll see once it's loaded that we now have a render input point and a grade output node, which have been read from our Katana Reader and Katana Writer nodes in Nuke. And you'll notice that the names of this input and output are respective of the node names in Nuke. So for example, if I was to add another Katana Reader node and merge it in to the network here and then save and refresh the script in Katana, then you'll see that we now have a new input point to load another image into. So that's how the setup works. Very simple and intuitive for comp artists to set up these scripts for use with NukeBridge. I've just shown you a simple example to start with, but these scripts can be set up to be as simple or as complex as needed. So let's jump into some examples. I'm going to start by taking a look at a multi-shot animation project and see how we can use the Nuke Bridge to streamline some common workflows here. So just to give a few examples of how Nuke Bridge can be useful uh, would be to preview grading. We can also stream multi-pass images through a Nuke script, uh, which would be set to rebuild the beauty pass. We can comp render layers together, preview depth of field or denoising, or we can set up context sheet outputs to view our shots, render layers, or passes. And these are just a few examples uh, for how you can utilize NukeBridge. Um, in fact, we are encouraging artists to let us know how they use or would like to be able to use the NukeBridge so we can develop those suggested workflows. So if you have any ideas, then we'd really love to hear them. So let's take a look in Katana again. I have a project here with nine shots and some renders saved in the catalog. And because we have these entries in the catalog, whether they be saved images, imported images, or renders from your current session, they can be selected for each of our Nuke input points in the Nuke Bridge tab. So I'll just reload that simple grade script that I saved before. And you'll see we're now able to choose these catalog entries from the dropdown. So I'll choose one of these. And I'll start by showing you a preview comp. So when you start a comp, you'll see it in the Nuke Sessions section. It will first show in progress, and then we'll see now that it's completed. And now we've got an image back, which has been passed through the comp process. And we can see it here in Katana in just a matter of seconds. You'll notice that Nuke isn't open. It wasn't launched. As I said before, preview and live comps are run in headless mode. So we can view the result in the context of a comp all from within Katana, which is a really useful and powerful ability for artists as it allows you to make more informed edits at an earlier stage than before. I'll use this um, same simple grade script just to demo the other two comp modes before jumping into some more complex examples. So let's set off a live render for the same shot and select it in the NukeBridge tab. I'm just making sure that the frame is the same for the live render as it was for the original preview render so that I can easily make comparisons between the two.
and now I'll choose live comp. And when we get that result back, we can now make changes to the scene inside Katana as usual. But with this live comp running, I can not only see the changes to my live render, but the changes are also continuously being streamed through the Nuke nodes, so I can see the updated live comp as well. This makes it really easy to see exactly how my changes affect the result of the comp. So I can be really sure that I'm making informed edits and I'll reduce the times that this would be passed back and forth between artists. So that's live comps. And if I also wanted to make some adjustments to the comp itself and see those changes reflected in the live comp in Katana, then I can start up an interactive comp. Before I set an interactive comp off, I'll cancel the current render. This will stop the live comp, but it'll keep my live render running, which is what I want because I'm going to send the same live render through the interactive comp. So now that I've done that, I can start the interactive comp, which will launch Nuke. And once it's loaded, I'll open them up side by side. So I can now go in and make any changes to the node properties. So as you can see, the comp is visible in both Katana and Nuke. And as I'm making edits here to degrade properties, you can see those updates being passed instantly back to the image in Katana. This may be useful if you want to send a preview render to Nuke or a render that you have saved in the catalog from a previous session. So you can make refinements in Nuke without needing to adjust the scene in Katana. I can add new nodes or disable and remove nodes if I wanted to. And all these changes will be reflected back in Katana. And once I'm happy with the edits, I can jump back to Katana and continue editing the lights which will update the live render and the live comp. So this is a really great way for lighting and compositing artists to make quick changes on either side and see exactly what's working and what's not without having to wait for those overnight renders. By working this way, you will end up with lots of variations in the catalog, which you could use for review. And you can also have different lighting or material setups controlled by graph state variables. So you can see how any number of variations look once a comp is applied. Jumping into some more complex examples, I'm going to cancel all the renders and comps that are currently running. And then I'm going to take a look at a nuke script that rebuilds the beauty pass. So I have a rendered multi-pass image here. And before I set off a comp, I just show you the different passes that we have here. So we have all the lights, the depth pass, direct and indirect diffuse and specular, and the subsurface and transmissive passes. So I'll just load that in. Now, this script has two outputs set up one for the beauty and a second one for a contact sheet of all of these passes. So to start, I'll quickly set off a preview comp for both of these outputs so you can see what they each look like. And I'll start with the preview comp for the beauty pass. And then once we have the beauty pass back, we can use the multi-view tools in the monitor to compare between the original render and the result that came back from Nuke. Then if I change this output to the contact sheet and set off another preview comp, you can see we get back a view of all of the passes. So this is really handy for getting those quick images back from Nuke so we can see how everything is looking. So I'm now going to start an interactive comp so that I can show you how this Nuke script is set up quickly. Just as a side note, Nuke has a tool for uh, rebuilding beauty passes. So I just used the RenderMan version as that's what I rendered with. But that's a really handy tool to quickly build scripts like this. So as you can see, we have a node graph which is rebuilding the beauty by shuffling passes out and merging them back together. And we have some grading on individual passes and an overall grade as well. And the two outputs that we can select in Katana are represented here. 
with the two katana writer nodes. So we're feeding the beauty into the beauty output and each shuffled pass into a contact sheet into another output. I've just noticed that the color space isn't set correctly in this project. So I'll quickly change that now. And this is just another example of how the Nuke Bridge can be utilized. We can make some edits. So I'll adjust the color correction to bring down the red tones in the image. And then I can jump back inside Katana and compare the result to the initial preview render that I set off. So just while we're taking a look at contact sheets, um, they're a very simple thing to set up, but a really useful tool. And we can use them in other ways as well. For example, to view different render layers. And so to show you an example of that, I'll load up another Nuke script to demonstrate. And here we have inputs for each layer, which are saved in the catalog. So I'll load them in now. And in the same way as the beauty pass script, this one also has two outputs, one for the comp layers and one for the contact sheet. So let's take a look at the comp result first. As you can see, the layers have been passed through the Nuke script, which is merged them together and added a grade. And if we look at the contact sheet output, we now have each layer visible in one image as well as the comp's result. So now we're starting to really see more of the potential of this interop between Katana and Nuke. We have all this information that would have before been available through Nuke or without even leaving Katana. I'll show you one more example before moving on because many artists will be working on multi-shot scenes and it's really important to get lighting and materials looking consistent across all of these shots. So I've loaded in a new script, which takes each shot as an input and then outputs a contact sheet. So I'm going to load in each shot from the catalog into the inputs here. And we now have a nice view of all the shots. Each one is labeled and we can compare the consistency across this entire sequence. Using a contact sheet here, can be really useful to help spot any issues over the course of the sequence, which may be missed if you're looking shot by shot. I'll start an interactive comp to show you the setup again. So we have some color correction for each individual shot. So we can go in and make any changes to individual shots for the purpose of reference or review. By using the Nuke Bridge, we can have a constant comparison between our current work inside Katana and the expected result once the compositing is taking place. So we've covered some animation examples in a fair amount of detail. Now let's take a look at the Nuke Bridge for VFX projects. Now, some, if not all of the examples that we've already covered are also relevant to VFX workflows. So I won't go over the same ones again. Instead, let's take a look at how we can use the Nuke Bridge to preview a slap comp. So in this example, we have some renders saved in the catalog and we can imagine that I'm a lighting artist who's been setting up the character lighting for a couple of shots and I have the HDRI and the set lights ready. So now I'd like to view the render in the context of the backplate. And as you can see here, we have some extra passes with these images, including the individual light passes. And I'll show you later on how we can use these passes to integrate our character. Just to note here, I'm using 3D light with this scene. So the AOVs are set up using a 3D light specific super tool. But just to clarify, any renderer can be used alongside the Nuke Bridge. But first of all, let's open up the Nuke Bridge and load in a Nuke script. This script is going to output a slap comp of the character on top of the backplate and apply a grade. So I'll choose one of these renders from the drop down input. And you can see we have a couple of different outputs as well. One is for a warm grade and the other is a cool grade. So we perhaps have two different grade variations that are being decided between. Now I'll set off a preview comp for the warm grade first. And once it comes back, 
we can see that the character is now comped on top of the back plate and the grade has been applied. So this has instantly given us a really clear idea of how the lighting is looking and we can spot any obvious errors or mistakes, any issues that we need to fix inside Katana. We can use the multi-view tools again in the monitor to have a look between the original render and the current version. I do use these multi-view tools a lot. I find it really useful to have this comparison between these images. So now I'll switch over to the cool grade output and we can see the difference between these two. And if we wanted to make any lighting changes at this point, then we could see how they affect both of the grading variations. Instead of making the lighting changes inside Katana, um, as we have covered that a fair amount in the animation workflows, I'm gonna show you instead how we can improve the integration and relight using the render passes. So just before we jump into that, something that we can do quite easily is to add a bit of depth of field, which can really help to integrate the character into the back plate better. And if we have a look, we have a render depth pass with this image. So I'll set off an interactive comp so that I can jump into the Nuke script and take a close up look at the image just to get an idea of what's needed. We can see the foreground of the back plate is slightly out of focus as well as the background. And this mid frame where the character's face is, that's where we want to remain in focus. So the armor on the right side here is going to be slightly defocused. I'll create a Z defocus node and adjust some of the properties. So I'll just change the math type to depth, the output to the focal plane setup and move the focal point. As I said, I want the character's face to be in focus as that lines up with the back plate focal point. And then I'll just increase the depth of field and size sliders until we have something that's starting to look good. I'll turn on the result and then I can make some more edits and compare the result with the back plate until I have a good match. By doing that, it means that we have a better slap comp set up that can give much better integration result. And because I'm using an interactive comp from Katana, I can send any future renders, including live renders to the same script to ensure consistency across variations, such as different shots or materials and so on. So I mentioned relighting. Uh, in this script, I already have set up the relighting by shuffling each light out. So we have the window light, the environment light, and then the ceiling light. And by doing this, we can make adjustments to the exposure separately to each light before merging them back together, the same way that we would rebuild a beauty pass. So I might want to bring down the ceiling lights as the back plate looks a little bit darker towards the right than our character is. I can also increase the window light to further integrate this character. And now if I wanted to, I can use these values from the exposure nodes to make edits to the lights within Katana and compare the results, or I can leave these edits on the comp side. So jumping back inside Katana, you'll see that our image has been updating with all of these edits that we've made into the script. And I use the multi-view tools one last time to compare the results. And just by adding that defocus and changing the lights ever so slightly, I think that the character is much better integrated now. It's not perfect, but just by having this image available to us inside Katana, that means that any future changes that we want to make are going to be much more informed. So we've had a good look into all these different ways that Nukebridge can be used. And the same goes for product and architectural visualization. Artists can utilize Nukebridge to preview backplates and test out different color combinations. View your building renders in the context of their location by viewing the comp and so on. So this bridge can be used in a number of different ways to really help and benefit your workflow. And as you can see, it's a fantastic addition to any lighting and compositing artist workflows. It allows you to be working more in context 
of the final result and gives you instant feedback of how a comp will look with any of your renders. So we've come to the end of the session. Uh, I just want to thank you all again for joining me today and allowing me to demonstrate the Nuke Bridge for you. 